Hi kids, how are you during this MCO 2.0? It has been more than a week already and I hope that you are doing good. I know that some of you might be a little bit worried and wondering when you can go out with your friends again or some of you might be scared of the virus. But here I want to tell you, in Bible it says that do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. So today, if you feel the feelings, all these feelings, I want to encourage you to pray about it, to pray and submit to God, and thank Him for His protection. Hi kids, we're still on Zoom this week as we are currently still on MCO, but do not fear, we are still going to have an awesome service. Teacher Jaila, what are you doing? Mm, I'm just making sure my environment is always clean. I know we've been in and out of home lockdown, which feels like forever. But I think now is the time, not the time to be relaxed about it. We must continue to be careful and do what we can to stop the spread of the virus. That's right, Teacher Jaila. We must always keep up our efforts to stay safe. But you know what other things that we need to do continuously despite being in lockdown? Hmm... Is it to eat healthy and get loads of exercise? We must do that too. But I wanted to remind us all that we need to also always follow Jesus and tell everyone the good news. From a distance. Yeah. For now, we've got to do it from a distance. All right. So, um, do you hear that? I think I hear music playing. I do believe you're right. I think it's time to worship God. Let's go. All the static, all the noise, can't compete with your beat. Tuning in to your voice, it's your love on repeat. Shout it out, tell the world I found a meaning. Can't be quiet anymore. You're the song I'm singing. Can you hear? Can you hear it? Through a million voices, you're the sound all around.
Hello kids, welcome back to another awesome episode of Every Nation Kids Online Survey. Can you believe it? We're still in MCO. Yes, it does feel like we're still in 2020 and this year is just a continuation of the same thing despite it already being 2021. But we can try to get over this feeling by shaking it off. So let's do this on the count of three. Let's all shake it off. Are you ready to trash away? Yes, I'm ready. All right, so in three, two, one. Thanks for the suggestion, Teacher Jaila. I needed that. Now, let's move on to more exciting stuff, like imagining a possible awesome scenario that might happen. Say, Teacher Jaila, what would you do if you have been given 10,000 ringgit? I'm talking about cash. What would you use your newfound riches for? I'd probably go shopping for art supplies or maybe throw half in savings and use the rest to buy loads and loads of junk food. Wow, all great things. Well, I cannot imagine getting so much money, but I do remember a time when I was young, maybe about 10, and my grandmother gave me a hundred ringgit note. Oh, wow. A hundred ringgit? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. A hundred bucks might be a lot less than 10,000, but it's still some serious money to be carrying around at 10 years old. My mom always told me to save it, but come on, mom. Hmm, I'm guessing you didn't save the money. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the full hundred ringgit on Pokemon cards. I bought the full set right off the shelf. However, the joke was on me. The very next week, the new edition cards came out and all of the packs that I bought were become, has become completely uncool. Nobody wanted my old cards when they were all trading with the new ones. Oh no, so after only one week and it wasn't cool anymore. Yeah, I raged at myself pretty bad by buying all of those cars. I mean, I seriously regretted it afterwards. But nowadays, I think back, I understand why I bought all those Pokemon cards. I was thinking small. I was thinking about that moment in time only, and I wanted something that would make me instantly happy. So I'm sure we've all done something like that before, Teacher Shui, and used the money given to us for things that would make us happy for just a little while. And um, I also think that we don't just do that with money, though. We do that with things that are way more valuable. Way more valuable than money? Yes. So I think our time and our talents are way more valuable than money, but we choose to waste time instead and do unproductive things. So don't get me wrong. I think we are allowed to have fun and do things that make us happy. But imagine how much more can we achieve if we put some of time and energy into doing something greater. Yes, whether you know it or not, we all have the resources to do something bigger. Let's take a look at a time when Jesus challenged some people to do just that. When we think about Jesus, often we think of the miracles he performed, like healing those with leprosy or walking on water. We also have images of large crowds surrounding Jesus as he spoke, like the story of the Sermon on the Mount or feeding the 5,000. 5, However, many of the stories and teachings found in the Gospels are of Jesus simply speaking with his closest friends, which are the disciples. So one day in Jerusalem, Jesus left the temple and was, and was met by his friends on a large hill covered in olive trees called the Mount of Olives. As they sat in the shade, Jesus spoke and the disciples leaned in to listen on topics about the future. When Jesus wanted to share an idea, he often told a parable, which is a story. These parables were told with everyday situations to help his audience think and understand God's truth for themselves. Surrounded by his disciples, Jesus told a parable about a rich man who entrusted his fortune to his three servants. So this story is taken from the book of Matthew, 
to help and to help illustrate this, we will have Pastor Agape and Teacher Elisha come on to act out the scene with us. All right, so the parable goes like this. The rich man was about to go ahead on a long journey, and he wanted to leave his money with the people he could trust. So he called in his three most loyal servants and divided his gold amongst them. So to the first servant, he gave five talents. And to the second servant, the second servant received two talents. The last servant received one talent. You may be thinking, what? So little. But in those days, it was a whole lot of money. With a deed done, the rich man went on his journey. With these five talents, I have invested it and got five talents more. And just like the first servant, I have also invested my two talents and got back Two more talents. I got one talent, but I'm scared to do anything. What if I invest this one talent and I lose everything? I better go and hide in the ground. <gasps> and after a while, the rich man returns and calls on his three servants. <clears throat> what have you done, sir? One. Welcome back, master. With the five talents that you have given me, I invested them and now I have five more. Wow, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Okay, now, servant two. What have you done with the talents I give well, you? Well, Master, I too have invested the talents you have given me and have gotten two more talents. Now, Servant Tree, it is your turn to present me what you have done. Master, I know that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scanned seed. So I was afraid and I went out and hit your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Not only did the servant not go out and invest the money, but he had not even put it into the bank to earn interest. What you have done is wicked and lazy. From today onwards, you will give your one talent to servant one. So whoever has will, will be given more, and they will have an abundance. However, whoever does not have, even when they have, will be taken away from them. So let's think about this story for a moment. So Jesus talked about the three servants who were given much while their boss, uh, the rich man, was away. So when the man came back, he celebrated the two who multiplied their money and returned to their boss for more. So, but the rich man scolded the man who did nothing with what he had. The message of Jesus' story was clear. Those who are responsible with what they are given will be given more, but those who waste it will end up with nothing. And even worse, what they had will also be taken away. So while Jesus told this story to the disciples, his words also make sense to us in 2021. Whether you know it or not, God has given us so much. And now maybe he hasn't given us bags of cash, but he has given us words to speak for him. Maybe you have been given much influence in the lives of the kids in your different classes or in your neighborhood. Maybe you have been given the ability to cook really good food. Whatever God has given you, it is not something that should just be kept to ourselves. It is meant to be shared. It's important for us to make the most out of what God has given us. Right. So Jesus made the most of his time with people. Part of why I love this message is because Jesus was using what God had given him, the gift of storytelling. 
to encourage us to use what God has given us. He showed love to everyone and helped them understand what is most important to God. How can you use what you have been given? Think about what exactly God has given you. Consider how God has wired you and gifted you. So imagine all the ways that you can use those gifts and talents to show others how much you care about them and how much God loves them. And don't worry if you're having trouble thinking about what you've been given. You'll have a chance to talk more about this with your teachers and friends in the kids hangout later. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of the lesson. But before we leave, let's pray and thank God for the way He has loved us and given us so much. All right, heads bowed, eyes closed, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us that you are a God um, who gives us great gifts and great talents. Lord, we just want to thank you for all the gifts and talents that you have given us. And remind us to make good use of our talents to show other people of your love and your care for them. I pray all this in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. See you all next week. Bye-bye.